During the following program, look for the main PBS web markers, which indicate there is in-depth information about main authors and their books on our website. Didn't read Mark Twain, nobody at all. Nobody, nobody mentioned to you that you should read this person. There wasn't one po no. poem or short story or anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Production of A Good Read on Maine PBS is made possible in part by the Davis Family Foundation. I could have told you he was going to turn in our yard even before he came up the road because there is a noise in the house which I hear every time Mummy's expecting a new man. Hi, I'm Sandy Pippen. Before I met Carolyn Chute in 1985, I had heard about this woman down in Gorham who was going to give me a run for my money. My own first book, The Police Know Everything, had been published in 1982. But when we met, there was no rivalry. I loved her right off. She had on this long skirt, this bandana, big boots, and had this, all this hair out to here. And her reading was wonderful. Since that time, I've looked forward to her colorful correspondence with me, as well as her writings and her books. Now, this is how it began, The Beans, her first book. We got a ranch house. Daddy built it. Daddy says it's called ranch because it's like houses out west, which cowboys sleep in. There's a picture window in all ranch houses, and if you're in one of them out west, you can look out and see the cattle eating grass on the plains and the cowboys riding around with lassos and tall hats. But we ain't got nothing like that here in Egypt, Maine. All Daddy and I got to look out at is the beans. Daddy says the beans are uncivilized animals, predators, he calls them. And thus we enter the world of Carolyn Chute. So, Carolyn, here we are again by the stove in your house. <laughs> yeah, we're laughing again, too. <laughs> I want to ask you about places in your life. I think we should start with that. Mm -hmm. You know, start out with Pond Cove, was it, where you grew up in Cape Elizabeth? Uh, yeah, I guess that was called Pond Cove. I kind of forgot, yeah. Well, you said one time, you said that you never, you know, creativity wasn't encouraged when you were a kid, in, in you, in school. Weren't yeah. you a creative little kid? Did you feel like a freak? A freak? Yes. Felt like you didn't fit in? No. Um, well, I didn't fit. You said you were invisible, sort of. I was invisible. Um, it's too much energy to conform, but mm -hmm. I did. I did conform. I figured if I was real quiet, that was as good as conforming, but it didn't take as much energy. Okay. I didn't want to waste my energy on conforming. I had uh, more important things to do, like I get out of school, I could save my energy real quiet. I got it like this, see, I could sit and I could look interested in the teacher's lips. <laughs> I had this like, look, I could look like that and they, they would love you, right? And, and they wouldn't pick on you and be mean to you like they would right. to the kids. You could survive that way. could survive and then you would survive a few years like that. So I was not into that. I would save my energy and get out at three o'clock and then two o'clock later when we were older. Mm -hmm. High school, right. Race home and make pies with my grandmother. My father was an electrician. He taught me how to make uh, electrical stuff. And my mm -hmm. uh, mother was a debater. She and I could do debates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she also, like, we draw pictures together sometimes. But, okay, and, so, you, so you drew pictures, too. You started out drawing. Oh, a few. Yeah, a okay, few. all right. You read was, comic books, though. Did you read com it? comic books? Mm, a little bit. Comics no. in the newspaper? I didn't like to sit still long. Okay. I like to do stuff. You were an active person. Kind of slow, mopey way, kind of. Did you get outside of Maine because your father was from North Carolina? Did you get to go down there? Or Once in a while. Okay, so you did travel. You we didn't have much money. Okay, but you went to a, a, you went outside of Maine, though. We went down when I was five. We went down when I was 12. Okay, all right. Did you enjoy that? I loved it. Storytelling on both sides? Total story. Uh, at night, it was all very political mm -hmm. stuff. They'd mm -hmm. always talk, tell stories about... Um, Politics? about Truman and they love Truman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> they used to like President him to say, Trump. if you don't like the heat, get out of, get the hell out of the kitchen or That's something right. like that, That's right? right. Yes, they used did. to always talk about stuff he like that. He swore. President Truman used to swear. Yeah, I know. So, it's so exciting. I know. <laughs> I know. They liked his attitude. But you combine, mm -hmm. I just thought of that, you combine the South and the New England, two great storytelling areas of our country in mm -hmm. you. So who told the best stories that, in your family? I think we're all talking at the same time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but was there a difference between the southern stories and the main stories? No. 
Oh. No, I think there's a difference between uh, urban professional and okay. and rural. country. Okay. That's probably the difference. But between rural areas, I think it's pretty much the same. Now, who okay. did you look forward to in your family? Somebody coming in, that would tell, or a neighbor that told a story as well? Well, my grandfather in Maine. Mm -hmm. Maine grandfather. Okay, who could spin a yarn. Yeah, they would all do it together, though. They mm -hmm. One would tell, like mm -hmm. we're doing now. Yes, like we're <laughs> <the> embellishing <laughs> it, adding to it. Yeah, going, yeah, yeah. Going yeah. off on tangents. They all do it together. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm leading up, of course, to what authors you finally did read that made a difference, like Mark Twain or anybody that no, I didn't. didn't read Mark Twain? Nobody at all. Nobody, nobody mentioned to you that you should read this person? There wasn't one po no. poem or short story or anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's incredible because you're, well, cause your style is your own. That's, that's yeah. I'm just trying to figure out how, where it came from, you know? Yeah, it came from... Just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. But these other influences... You always came from you. I know anybody yeah. who writes like you. That, well, that's true. I mean, we are... See, in you, over, you overcome all those other people that you read. That's right. But I, but I, in my childhood, Carolyn, I did listen to the people around me. I was fascinated with the summer people, of course, and mm -hmm. the, the people in the farm. And, I came and it from, shows. Yeah. You got your ear right up yeah, there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I was always listening, just like you were. I mean, I was a quiet kid, really. I was sitting in the back, and I was shy, too, believe it or not. I really was. And mm -hmm. I would listen to the, what was going on around me. I was fascinated. Your stuff, when you read your stuff, it's just like you feel like you're right there. Yeah. Well, I feel the same way about you, yours. Yeah. <laughs> what about words? I should have started out by you. Must have loved words as a kid, right off. You must have. I guess. I Didn't know. words words amuse you? I guess. Playing with words. Did I, you play games like? Scratch? I did write novels. Oh, you did. Okay, now talk about. Yeah, that. I get up at five in the morning every day to mm -hmm. work on my novels because mm -hmm. I had to go put time in in school, and so I had to work early to get done what I needed to get Were done. Were they romance novels, love stories? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. you like love, I know that. I love love, mm -hmm. yeah, right. <laughs> That's yeah. right. <laughs> right. You still have those books? You have them around? No, I don't know what, I, th I don't know what happened to those. I did have a fire. Mm -hmm. where I remember one time, and that may have been where those particular ones went, um, I started a little fire out in the yard and burned them all. Cause they were all handwritten and... You know, yeah, kid, pictures. Kid, kids and with pictures. pictures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. And you tied them up with uh, twine or something, like a, like a book, so it was like in book form? No, there were no books. Oh, okay. Oh, they were. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's how you did it. All right. Yeah. Okay. But you were doing that then. You were writing yeah, on your own. Yeah, in fact, before I could actually write, I was making books, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used to, like, glue them together yeah. and, and scribble in them. Yes. I always right. wanted to have little books and set them over to one side. What did you dream about as a kid? What did you see yourself doing as a, as a girl? I wanted to be a farmer's wife. Okay, okay. In Cape Elizabeth? Some feminist said to me one time, how come you didn't want to be the farmer? I said, because I don't like killing animals. Okay, all right. Oh, animals now, too. That's a major influence in your mm -hmm. life. Right off. Did you have pets? Lots of pets? Lots of pets. Okay. Cats, dogs? Dog, rabbit. Right. Thing. Uh, you know, <laughs> hamster. Hamster, okay. Fish. All right. Fish. Birds. Okay, everything. Okay, so when you left high school, you left Cape Elizabeth, essentially. Bye bye. You know, the end <laughs> yes, of Cape yeah, right. <laughs> and you were off to Gorham then? Did you go to Gorham then? No, uh where'd you live? Well, we I got married and we lived in a couple of places. Gorham, I'm trying to remember how many years. Nineteen seventy to eighty five. So fifteen years, years in Gorham. Yeah. And you you had a house too there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which you later gave to your granddaughter to do My that? daughter. To your good to your daughter, that's right. Your daughter had it. Yeah. And how many grandchildren have you got now? No three. Brandon. Three three. Grand, three grandkids. Okay. All right, but then when you went to school, you did go to college. You went to Gorham? Oh, or, right, or Paul? Uh, uh, Gorham, Paul, and then it was Pogo U. Okay, that's right. They called it that then, didn't they, mm. before it became USM. That's right. Well, the Marine Corps. <laughs> Why did they right. change that? Pogo I, I U know, was I much better. I don't like UMO either for my section. So you were, yeah. when you were in the college situation at Gorham, uh, you met Ken Rosen? Oh, yeah. I'll tell you the truth. Want to be something wasn't in my... Okay. I wanted to be a farmer's wife. Right. <laughs> if you couldn't be that, it'd be a psychologist. No, well, no, no, no. Actually, I wanted to be a farmer's wife, but I wanted to know psychology. Okay. You know, so you can talk people into things and <laughs> talk them out of things. Here's some good stories. Yeah, right. So I decided that um, I would go to the dean and ask for a independent, no, a, a self-designed major. I wanted to major in creative writing with the supporting courses in social science, social sciences, mm -hmm. because Sounds I wanted good. to write about people. Right. Oh, no, he said, you can't do that. You've got a major in literature. Mm -hmm. Reading books. Uh, <laughs> I don't like that. He, said, he goes, 
you don't like reading books? Well, you'll have to. You have to do that because you can't learn to write unless you read books. Mm -hmm. And I go, mm -hmm. I don't like to. You mean like that whale story that's like this thick and smells like dust? Right? And he <laughs> You're goes, talking about Moby Dick? Moby Dick, right. You have to. You have to. And I go, no, I don't want to. And I, I get, this is a self-design major, not dean design major. And I should be able to do it the way I want. He goes, no. And I go, okay. I quit. And I quit. Were you writing then for the Gorham newspaper at that time? I mean, it, Portland, 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 Portland yeah. Press Herald? Yeah, uh, yeah. All that time. How many years did you do that? I can't really remember. 74 to almost 80, 80 I guess. Okay, for six or seven years then, okay. Yeah, I went in the other day, saw my old friend was there. Mm -hmm. What do they think of you now? I don't know what they're thinking. Uh, have you kept all those columns? You kept all those columns? I did, but they got flooded in the cellar and the... mouse chewed. Oh, really? Oh, too bad. <laughs> I'd like to see some of them. They probably got them. Would the, were they, did you have any of your touches then? Could you write the way you wanted to? They uh, were nice. They okay. were really good. They, they let said, you write your own way? They let me get away with a lot on the features. Mm -hmm. Okay. They All were right. really good. I, I, I loved, that was one of the first positive experiences I had out in the world, other than college. I liked college mm -hmm. until the dean. Right, right. Um, but working at the Press Herald Evening Express. It was enjoyable. Was Really wonderful. I loved. I loved the people there. So you really did go into the office. You didn't just write. I used at home. to love to go into the office. Yeah. What was your name then? Your byline then? Hawks. Okay. Who was my first husband's? All right, Carolyn Hawks. Hawks. Yeah. Oh. You went from being a penny to a Hawks to a Chute. That's right. In your lifetime. That's, well, that's right. right. And if I get married again, I'll have another name. Auntie, <laughs> <laughs> want to hear something that I wrote a long time ago? That I forgot all about. Somebody dug it up. It's called Dragon Boy. The babies are on the merry-go-round horses Omar fixed up for them on the lawn. Some of the horses are pawing at the air, their necks arched. These horses make a ring in our yard. The babies have been riding these for miles uncountable, but now they stop. They are all watching Sandy Buzzle spit on our yard. I could have told you he was going to turn in our yard even before he came up the road. Because there is a noise in the house which I hear every time Mummy's expecting a new man. It's the creaking of the floor. She's going around in there picking up all our clothes and straightening the lampshades. And she does this thing which I'll never understand as long as I live, resembles torture. She sits down in front of the mirror and picks out the tweezers from a velvet box and yanks out the, the hairs of her eyebrows. Before we jump ahead to the new books and all that coming out, let's go back, though. I want to get this all connected. Mm -hmm. Did you write some short stories that you thought could be published and give them to Ken Rosen? Is that how this worked? No. You didn't? No. Did you send them in yourself to no. magazines? No, oh. I wasn't. What happened it. then? What was the transition? Well, one time he had a thing, uh, the first Stone Coast thing. That's the Summer Writer Conference yeah. that people come to from all over the country. Yeah. And people came who were publishers and... Mm -hmm. Editors, editors yes, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, those other things, uh, agents. Yeah. All right, and uh, I didn't have the money to really attend the conference, so I sat in on it. Mm -hmm. I go to different classes, and he he said I could. So okay. Anyway. All right. And he said to this woman who was with uh, Plowshares, mm -hmm. so I had some connections with right. it. Plowshares is the literary magazine mm -hmm. out of Cambridge, Massachusetts. And he said you would might like to read some of Carolyn's stories, and then. I said, oh, <laughs> and mm -hmm. then she goes, mm -hmm. oh, yes, send me one. All right, I send her Alio, and she says, oh, I'd like to put this, get this, I'm going to show it to mm -hmm. the guy who was the editor at the time, and then he said, I'll take it, if you got any more. I said, okay, and I sent him some more, and then he got them published for me all over the place, mm -hmm. and then the Best American Short Stories took right. Alio, right. and then, then agents started writing me, and then it was just like, <laughs> was that 85 when that came out, the Best American Short Stories of 85, mm, or 84? No, 82. Yeah. Oh, was it that early? Yep. Was it 82? Mm -hmm. My God, time has flown. You're right. I remember reading it in there, too. I got mm -hmm. that. I still have that. So that's how it began. Yeah. And then how, what was the transition? So then the agent, a friend, a person I met at the conference had an agent who said, I'd like to see if she's got a novel. And then I said, well, mm -hmm. it's not done. Mm-hmm. You were still not. Done. You were working on the book. beans then, though? Yeah. Okay. And I said, well, look, I'd like to go through it again. And I went through it again. I gave it to her. Did you call it the beans right from the beginning? The beans, but the, the, uh, my editor that said, what about beans of Egypt mean? And I said, hmm. Okay. Good. Sounds Actually, good. the beans is great, though, just by itself. It would have been. Okay. Did you mm -hmm. pick, now why did you pick beans? Because of L.L. Bean? There was no, actually, everybody says that. Everybody I, didn't says even, that. I, I never knew about L.L. Bean. Never even thought about it. No, I wanted to name it. It was kind of like 
you know, like a... It's a main name. Yeah, it's from McBain. Mm-hmm, right. I'm Scottish. That's right. I wanted it to be kind of a main name, and I knew a lot of people named Beanie. I want to go back now to how your life changed when you became the famous author, because you've been pretty famous now for 15 yeah, years. Yeah, I got a house. Yeah, got a house. Got a man. Yep. <laughs> well, no, actually, I had him before. <laughs> the, but the, ma the mail. The mail increases. The mail increases. It increases. Mm -hmm. And I used to do birthday cards. Right. That's right. You used to send me birthday cards. But anybody right. out there in TV land who doesn't get a birthday card that I used to, don't think it's only you. I just don't. Mm -hmm. I had. To, I used to yeah. send a lot of birthday cards. Right. Have, um, you can't afford a secretary. No. <laughs> I can't afford myself. <laughs> Well, so what happened, yeah. though? You got to, when the book came out, and you had to go to New York. Did you go to New York? You went to Chicago. I know the Chicago story. I know which book. Beans. Oh, Beans. Still the first one. Oh, everywhere. I went everywhere. Mm -hmm. They dragged me around. I was a specimen. Okay. They you... thought I was a specimen. Yes, you were. And, which I was. I remember I went to uh, you... the Dodge home in Michigan. Mm -hmm. It's a big mansion. And mm -hmm. it was like a little... From the Dodge family, the, the Dodge car family. company. It yeah. was so huge. They had a room as big as my house for wrapping gifts. Mm -hmm. Right. The <laughs> kid had a dollhouse out in the yard as big as my home. It was all stone. It was beautiful. They had Van Gogh paintings in the hall. We had to wear blue things to keep track of us wherever we were. <laughs> now, they only had so many rooms that you could actually stay in. The guests could stay in because mm -hmm. the others were all roped off. What right? were you there for? To have a to be the specimen. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I had to share the room with this editor from Reader's, Writer's Digest. Writer's Digest, right. okay. But during the day, they roped part where our beds were. They roped them off so that guests, uh, so that tours could come in and look at the gold knobs in the bathroom mm -hmm. sink. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> right. So, but during the early morning, she and I were sitting in there. I remember, and she used, she would drink. Mm -hmm. She was drinking mm -hmm. and getting opened up a little bit. Yep. Getting this day going. Yeah. <laughs> she was. <laughs> She looked over at me and she goes, the only reason you're here is you're like a trained tiger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, I know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it. She says, they want you here to perform. The Beans made you famous and well-known and you went all across the country and had all these adventures. Uh, yeah. And then the second book was Lertuno's Used Auto Parts. Right. Which I think is a wonderful book. I taught that at the University of Maine. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. It was a good, it's a wonderful book. So yeah. what, what happened with that, though? Well, I remember one review. One reviewer saying, um, "Oh, this little girl, the teenage girl, which is sort of the main character, mm -hmm. um, was going to make something of herself, and she was because she was uh, dreaming of having a two eighties, uh, some kind of a fancy sports car, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in the end, she only just wound up with a man <laughs> instead of a." <laughs> by book number three yes they Mary were, men Mary men excuse me they were very upset I almost said a bad word but anyway they were very <laughs> angry and my editor I was in his apartment in New York he was living on Park Avenue and um, he we were up in his living room there and he goes Carolyn read this review that's mm -hmm. New York Times mm -hmm. and then there was the New Yorker right or big reviews of Mary men mm -hmm. and he was saying well what do you think <laughs> and it said that they they go well this a couple of things they said well this book is sort of pretty pretty good um, so therefore she must be a phony mm -hmm. a phony what right? right right well phony working class person because a working class person must be too stupid to write a book mm -hmm. this is what they said mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. right if they'd said black person gay person um, what, uh, Indian person uh, woman mm -hmm. too stupid to write a book there would have been outcry all over the country but right. nobody said a word. Right. right. The other thing they said was, oh, three books about these people. When is she going to get out of this place? Mm -hmm. Three books about these people. You know, we can see it to have them come in and fix the plumbing, mm -hmm. um, walk <laughs> off. But the sympathetic, a sympathetic bothered them, too. Mm -hmm. They said not only pr primary characters, mm -hmm. whatever they call them, main characters, but sympathetic. Right. Them. Right, that they actually are good people after all. Mm -hmm. They really um, got mad. Now that book, Mary Man, that's the Robin Hood book. Yes. His name was Livingston. That's because you haven't read it all yet. Well, I read half He's of it. He's only read half of <laughs> <I read> book. <laughs> <half laughs> <of it. laughs> <laughs> but Livingston is the character. Who? No. Maybe Livingston? Uh, no, give Robin me a Hood? second. I can remember. Barrington. Oh, Barrington. Right. That's the name. Lloyd, okay. Lloyd, the L was. That's L, right. That's right. where well. the L comes from. I knew there was an L in there. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, he, but in that book, he, you were trying to do the old Robin Hood story. He yes. Was, he yeah. was going to rob from the rich and for the, for the poor people, right? He so. even robbed from some guys around that weren't rich, but they had been right. kind of sucking up and naughty and stuff. Now, in your new book, in Snowman, we're finally at Snowman. 
You, you don't enter into your world, your special world here yeah. at, at Parson Field. Uh, it's in Boston. But it does have that sort of fabulistic quality. I mean, all, yes. all this stuff is fabulous. Yes, like, yes. Know, like Robin Hood yeah. and then now this uh, that's right. guy he can get from here to there and all that. Right. That's all part of that sort of fable. But it is a surprise. And you're writing about people that aren't backwoods people. They're upper middle class, even upper class people in Boston. Well, they in, were in, in the other Mary Men's got them. Yes, but, but, I'm, but I meant it's exclusively pretty much. Oh, yeah, they, they definitely have You the enter into hand. that world, that world that mm. you're in. You're in Boston. That's right? what makes them mad. Yes, yes. Okay, that probably true. Like yes, I would think so. Right. And your descriptions are quite hilarious. And <laughs> Of the you said it wasn't funny. A few well, minutes well, I, is it funny? It's funny. The, 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 <laughs> but, the, but I wasn't laughing at them. No, but the clothes the that they, the clothes they wear, the uniform. You know, you, yeah. you call the uniform of. I never would laugh at rich people because they're just people. It's the whole system that allows this to be. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I know some rich people. They're just people. There's nothing. You know, and if if we fell into that mm -hmm. situation ourselves, what do we what do we do? You know. You know, we don't know. You can't know what you do in certain situations. I just know that the setup is lousy, right? And, so, and you're going to try to change it through your oh, writing? Well, huh? <laughs> as much as you can? Well, uh, I don't think I can change it, but um, maybe a ripple. But I tried, but not if it's blacked out, which that was. It was blacked out. Definitely. It was all over the country. It was blacked out. I never mm -hmm. got the interviews. They refused. My publicity people would call. They go, we don't want to interview about that book. Mm -hmm. you know, and they were really, really mad. Did you fight them? Did you? Did your agent? Did anybody stand up to no, them? No. Uh, the people of, uh, the people at Hacker Brace said, well, this book is going to be controversial. Be ready to be abused. Mm -hmm. They said this to me. Okay, right? okay. I was waiting for the abuse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, and just just, just they just blacked it out. They just blacked it out. They. I don't think even Harcourt predicted that. Has they didn't like book? Robert. Okay. In Robert. fact, there's been people who actually said we can't, we can't have your blurbs on our books. We can't, we don't want anything to do with you anymore. Is that right? That's really mm -hmm. true. You mm -hmm. know, we've got to talk about Robert Drummond because he killed a senator. That's how the mm -hmm. book begins, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why they're upset because he's this. Because he killed. I mean, his well, book. It's a book. It's a book. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a movie. It's only a movie. It's only a book. Well, that's what they're disturbed by that you made this. Yeah, he's maybe the, they think that's really going to happen. He's the hero. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, maybe so. But, maybe. but but his plan. We don't want to give too much of the book away. But his plan was to kill both a Republican and a Democrat. One right? of each. One of each. He was right? no wing. Right, that's right. He was no one. That's right. But he was in the main militia. No, he wasn't in our militia. He was in the snowman militia. He had militia. his own militia. He had his own militia. He had a different kind of militia. Which of your books, Carolyn, did you most enjoy writing and why? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, we've talked I about the beans. I enjoyed them all. I enjoyed okay. them all. For different reasons. I mean, yeah. I mean, they all have times of um, difficulty and times of, you know, it's, Especially mm -hmm. like, for instance, the one I just finished was six years. Mm -hmm. So in a span of six years working 12 hours a day, most days, you couldn't call it all enjoyment. I mean, you couldn't call it all, no. you know, this is okay. all this, this part of your life. Sure. <clears throat> They're like, which years of your life did you enjoy the most? <laughs> 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 you know? Well, I just was curious about that. I wondered if one went easier than the other one did. They've... This this big one that I just finished, mm -hmm. I Started the title is oh, um, the, is, uh, oh, the, the school on Hearts Content Road. Okay, Hearts is okay. was never a hitch. It's gone right, really smooth. The problem of it, the problem I had with it was that it was long. I could go, uh oh, <laughs> I can see this is getting long, and they only pay you a little bit of money to write it. Like I got an advance, it was mm -hmm. a little bit of money. My money ran out like mm -hmm. years ago, so right. I've been living on nothing. But you get royalties, don't you, on your other things? Not really, because they give you such big advances mm -hmm. in the beginning, anyway. Right. In the beginning, they did. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not, I think my my first book probably sold more than the others because everybody thought that it was about incest when right. it, it wasn't. Right. <laughs> it wasn't. Thanks, thanks to the New York Times. Yeah, thanks to the New York Times. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Are you looking forward to this series, even without a television? <laughs> <laughs> I never watch myself on TV. It's like you know the ghost thing mm -hmm. with the Indians. I'm part Indian, you see, and. Can't. We don't believe in looking at our pictures. It'll steal your soul. Yeah, it makes you, when you see how awful you look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's that, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, this has two swears, swear words, so I'll just say cuckoo, cuckoo, like that when I get to them. Oh. Cuckoo <laughs> is the title, right, of this particular section. So, um, I mean, the other word, but I'll say cuckoo. Um, and this is about a, a reporter who was just um, 
said the wrong thing to a um, person she's trying to get news out of, and uh, and uh, she feels that she's out of his good graces now, and she um, is really disturbed. So that's why she said the word, which I will say Google instead of okay. And then now she hates herself. Other reporters stay cool, smooth as cream. They'd still be in Gordon St. Ange's good graces. Their faces controlled. Their voices electronic almost. Ivy Morelli was never meant to be a reporter. Maybe a cop or a school principal. Yes, when you have people in handcuffs or you are four times their size, it doesn't really matter that you say everything wrong. Visit our website for more information about A Good Read and the writers featured in this series, including a transcript of the interviews, biographies of each of the authors, a complete list of their published works, some tips on how to find those books, what's on their own must-read book list, and more. Production of A Good Read on Maine PBS is made possible in part by the Davis Family Foundation. Well, look, thanks a lot for letting us come into your world once again. It's a great world. Anytime, Sam, you can pop by. But just leave the cameras behind. <laughs> 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 sort of like...